Hey folks, thanks for joining us tonight. Listen, grab yourself a beverage, grab your loved one because well, we're cooking with Charles tonight. Tonight we're going to make some grilled pickles and we're going to make some bluefish and we're going to have fun while we do it. So get what you need to sit down and watch and we'll, we'll be right back and we'll get this show started. Hey guys, welcome back. Listen, right over here on this grill, let's get a nice shot of this. As I mentioned, we're gonna be grilling some pickles. So over here, I have some cut pickling cucumbers already sliced up, grilling away. Look at those nice grill marks on these puppies, huh? This is gonna give it a nice extra flavor that you probably have not had in your pickles before. We also have some grilled red bell peppers, which we're gonna add to our little pickling stuff. And we have some green beans. We have some green dilly beans. We're gonna pickle those up as well. Now in this pot right here, guys, we have our vinegar, we have our water, we have our sugar. We've simmered this for about 10 minutes so it's ready to go into the uh, jars. So you know what, these are ready to go. So let's get our jars ready, guys. Wanna take about a teaspoon of sea salt or kosher salt. Put that in the bottom of your pickling jars as well as, you know what, a little sprig of, or a little leaf of bay leaf. Now, beyond that, it's up to you what you want. I personally like some dill, so for my cucumbers, I've got some dill seed. I did not have time to run to the store and get some uh, fresh dill, but I did have time to go to my neighbor's garden and steal some dill seed from his um, overgrown dill. All right, now for our uh, dilly beans there, gonna add a little bit of ginger. What I did for the beans, folks, is I put those in some uh, olive oil, and I used cumin, and I used some paprika, just a very light touch of salt, and I used a little bit of ginger. And what I did is I, well, just did this. We grilled them up. So we're gonna let those sit for a moment. Turn that off on this side. We're gonna start with our cucumbers. We want to pack these in here tight. Voila. Now folks, what we're going to do today too, this is, I got to let you know, this is a cold pickling, meaning we are not going to be pickling these in terms of sealing them so you can leave them out of the refrigerator. You must refrigerate these for a little while, okay? All right. You want to pack everything in there tight as you can. So check this out, we have, there, that is our cucumbers. Now, to our cucumbers, I've already roasted up some garlic ahead of time. And we're gonna drop this, and you can drop this in there, just a few little cloves. Now to roast your garlic, guys, cut your whole clove in half. Check this out. All right, we just cut it all in half, drizzle it with olive oil. Bake it at like 400. I use a toaster oven at home. And, uh, well, just kept, once I could smell it, means that it was pretty much done. So we have that in there. Now for our dilly beans. We're going to place these in here as well. Mm. Now guys, also, when you're canning, anything, even a cold can like this, Make sure you sterilize everything. Put it in boiling water for about 10 minutes, or at the very least, you want to put it in your dishwasher under a sanitized cycle. Now, when I did these up ahead of time, I measured, I put them in here. However, when you cook them, they lost some moisture. So I have a lot more space in there 
uh, than I anticipated. So make extra. I thought I made enough extra to accommodate that, but you know what? I did not. So there we go with that. And now very simply, we have water, vinegar, and sugar. You want to fill that to about a half inch from the top. There we go. Now, if we were canning these, we'd put those in boiling water, the whole jar for 15 minutes, get that vacuum sealed, but we're not. What we're going to do with these is we're just going to take our sterilized tops. That is it. You get a nice tight, things will expand. And you know what? We're going to let these cool for about 20 minutes to a half an hour on the counter. And then we will put them in the refrigerator and we'll let them sit. These will keep, God, almost indefinitely because, oh, it's pickles, <laughs> okay? It's already being preserved, but you don't want to eat these for at least 48 hours. Uh, the longer you let them sit, the better. They will absorb all those flavors. So guys, guess what? You now have dilly beans, okay? Any way you want to make them. And we now have grilled pickles. So we're gonna put these aside. And we're gonna get to the main course tonight. So let's get our pan going. Yeah, which side went? We're gonna be on that side. Medium high heat. So what we're gonna do first. Well, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut up some leeks. Got a leak right here, folks. Let me move that out of the way. We just want this white part of the leek. Let me show you a nice easy way to julian up a leek. You got this round thing, got this round area. You just want to slice about halfway down and that's very easy to spread it like that. Voila! Check out that magic. Huh? You've got nice julian strips of leeks. Hey, you missed that? We'll do it again. Gonna cut down about halfway. Open this leek up. Voila. Now, leeks can be a little sandy, so what we're going to do is we're just going to place them in water right here, a little bowl of water we, get, water we get going on. That's it. Now, if you're home, you have a colander, let them sit in the colander after in the water for a few minutes. We're just going to shake ours off and just put them right over there. Now, what else do we need? Well, let's see how our pan's doing. It's heating up nicely but we're on the wrong burner. So let's try this one one more time. <laughs> okay, we got our grill going. We got the pan going. All right, gonna add a little bit of olive oil to the pan. And I don't know about you, but I'm getting thirsty. So uh, <laughs> let's drink. Mm. As we always drink copious amounts of wine when we're cooking with Charles, and I must tell you what we're drinking tonight. We have La Bastarda. You've, we've had this before on this show. It's a nice, light summer wine. Uh, tonight's a Pinot Grigio. It'll go great with our fish, and we'll be cooking with this as well later. So we're gonna get our oil heated up. And while that's heating up, let's slice up some vegetables here. Get some cherry tomatoes from my garden and they are wonderful. Mm. Now, we use artichokes. Over the weekend, I bought a bunch of fresh artichokes. Let me tell you, it's a heck of a lot of work to get this much out of it. So, folks, spend the dollar fifty, get this already done for you. It's definitely well worth it. And we're just gonna cut these in half. And actually, we're gonna take a little bit of that brine. Put that right in there. Voila. A little more brine. 
That's what that's going to do is that's going to help give you that artichoke flavor that you get from the fresh artichokes, which is a little more of an intense flavor that you're going to lose uh, from the canned artichokes. So we're going to use that brine. Place those all right in there. Cut these in half. Mm, that's going to be good. Now, we're also going to add a little bit of wine to this. And we'll put the rest in my cup. <laughs> now, we're going to let this simmer down. And while that's working, let's not forget our tomatoes. Right in there. And some garlic. Again, my, my roasted garlic I made earlier. Can actually squeeze a lot of this out. We're just going to take a few cloves, leave them whole as you can. And this is going to give it just a really, really nice depth of flavor beyond regular garlic. And if your guests don't want to eat the whole clove of garlic, they don't have to, they can just take it out. So there we go. Mm. That is smelling wonderful right now. All right, now, the star of the show. I'm gonna get that down here from our magic little refrigerator down here. Got a nice fresh piece of bluefish, folks, caught by yours truly off the coast of Norton Point. And that's in Martha's Vineyard. Look at that. That is a beautiful piece of fish, folks. Beautiful fish. It is so fresh. Mm. But what we're going to do is we're just going to cut it up a little bit. We're going to leave the skin on. And just got to cut it into, a, you know, just a few manageable pieces. Mm. This is a wonderful fish. Uh, blue fish, nice fatty fish. Holds up well to cooking, doesn't really flake around a lot. It's just beautiful fish. We're going to cook this two ways, folks. First way is going to be, well, we're going to fry it up. We're also going to grill some. So right now, going to add another ingredient, though, to our sauce over here. We have some mussels, a uh, nice jar of marinated mussels from Denmark. Use whatever kind of mussels you want. I just saw these in the store. Great to cook with because it's very handy. Very, very handy. Mmm, that is looking good already. Let me see how these leeks are going. Mmm, very nice. All right. First things first. Let's salt, and let's pepper. I'm going to add a little bit of ginger to everything tonight. You know what? I want a little of ginger in there as well. Okay, we're going to grill some, and we're also going to pan fry some up. So let's get our oil going in here. And, uh, well, let's begin. Going to put some flour in there. Don't want to do too, don't want to put too much flour. Just enough. Just enough to coat it very lightly. And that's just going to give it a little bit of extra oomph when we fr pan fry it up or pan sear is a sexier way of saying it. Voila. Now these pieces right here, we'll just put these on our grill. And you know what? Do skin side down. Always start skin side down. That's going to help um, keep it together. Even though it's a nice big flake fish, it won't flake apart. It'll still flake apart if you cook it wrong. So skin side down helps hold it together. All right. Now, Let's see how our oil's going. All right, you know what? Let's see how hot that is. Oh, 
a little bit more on the oil. Mm, folks, this is starting to smell wonderful in here. All right, folks, I'll tell you what, this will be a great time to uh, get up, refresh your beverage, and uh, have a word from our sponsors. So be right back, and uh, we're not going anywhere, so you don't either. Be back in two minutes. Hi, I'm Charles Minnick, host of GTV Smash Hit, Cooking with Charles. I've teamed up with the Goffstown Network to tell you about their outreach and food pantry programs. The mission of the Goffstown Network is to provide for the hunger related needs of our neighbors in Goffstown and their surrounding communities. Founded with the governing principles that no person should go hungry and every person deserves our care. The Goffstown Network serves the area by providing food and other services on an emergency short term basis. This spirit of community and mutual caring is extended to anyone in Goffstown, Dunbarton, and New Boston. Normal hours of operation are Wednesday evenings, 6 to 8 p.m., and Saturday mornings, 10 a.m. to noon. Now, you can, you can also assist them through donations of time, food, or money. Like the help they give, the help they receive is also greatly appreciated. You can reach them by calling the number on your screen or by stopping by the Parish House of St. Matthew's Church. It's located in downtown Goffstown at 7 North Mass Street, right across from Sully's. We could not do this show without the help of our friends at Sully's Superette. Since 1987, Sully's has provided the area with the best meats around. Here at Cooking with Charles, we not only count on them for their kind donations of meat, but John and the gang at Sully's also provide us with the best produce, deli items, and libations that make Cooking with Charles the huge success it is. From all of us at Cooking with Charles, thank you. All right, and we're back, guys. All right, so let's recap. We got the vegetables going. We've got the fruit. I was pointed out by our well, blooper guy in the booth that this is a tomato. It's a fruit, not a vegetable. So we got our fruits and vegetables going over here. Thank you, Andrew. He's also English, so he really has nothing culinary to add to anything except the haggis. So, and, and Stilton cheese. But anyway, so we got that going. We've got some grilled uh, bluefish going. I'm going to start pan searing this. We get our oil heated up. And we're just going to let that sit right in there. And that will take about eh, two or three minutes aside. So we're going to put that on high. Let that go. Now also to recap, folks. We made these lovely, lovely pickled vegetables. How did we do it? Magic. No, actually, we actually grilled these. We grilled our beans, very similar, similar to the dilly beans you'll see in, your, in the store on the shelves. Um, this is a cold pickling, meaning that we're not boiling the canning. We're not boiling these, the whole canning process. No, nope. we're using vinegar, water, and salt, and sugar that we simmered for a few minutes, and we put it in here with some other spices, as well as these, uh, the, the uh, cucumbers. We grilled all those, and we put these in the canning jars, and once they cool for about 20 minutes, they go in your refrigerator, and they go in there for at least 48 hours before you will touch them. Better if you wait a week, you know, that way all the flavors incorporate, and you're gonna love them. But they'll last at least a month in your refrigerator. So those are right there. Let's check what's going on over here, folks. Looks like we have, ooh, we got some good fish. You know what I gotta get myself? I gotta get myself a good fish spatula. I never seem to pick one up, and every now, I'm always thinking, God, I need one of those. But look at those, we got some good grill marks there. I think we can turn that down. And let's take this fish right here, and we're just going to flip it. Now this blue fish, locally caught, by yours truly. Really. And we season that with some pepper, some salt, some ginger because, well, I like ginger. Season yours however you see fit. All right, while well, that's cooking, let's get a little plate going, folks. Uh, also want to remind you these artichoke hearts, you'll get a more robust flavor, more intense flavor if you use fresh artichoke hearts, but it's a lot of work as I found out. And uh, I just don't recommend it. <laughs> it's too much work. Buy some canned ones, use a little bit of the brine, 
and uh, that will help give you the flavor. We also added to this half a jar of marinated mussels. They're like little baby mussels, but you know what? The jar is only about a buck fifty at any grocery store. And it's just great to have mussels that are already cooked, already marinated, already shelled. You know, so you're not messing with all that and you can have mm, that sweet mussel flavor any day of the week. All right. Wow, folks. We are ready, I think. Mm, put another minute on these. But these grilled ones, yeah, those are done. And these look great. So let's turn everything off except our pan searing ones here. So pretty much, folks, this is it. This is bluefish. Voila, check this out. Now it's time for a fork and a drink. Mm. This, my friends, is what summer is all about. And sadly, summer is fleeting. Kids go back to school next week. By the time, you, by the time this show airs, they'll have been in school. Oh, that's wonderful. But they'll have been in school for a while. Mm. Oh my God, folks. Wow. Mm. Perfect. You get a nice char from the grilling. Mm. A sweetness from the mussels and the tomatoes oh. and the ginger. Folks, this is awesome. You cook this, you will be a star in your kitchen. You must try it. And folks, if you can't get out there and catch your own seafood, by all means, all the local supermarkets, everybody has bluefish. It's an inexpensive, about three, four, five dollars a pound, depending on where you go. And it's a great fish. Highly recommend you try this at home, or you know, any kind of fish you like. Haddock, whoa, oh, that is done. That is beautiful, folks. Mm. You know, before we go, Let's try a little bit of the pan seared. Again, that's a sexy way of saying fried. Oh, look at that, the skin. Leave the skin on, folks. Gives it a nice crunch and it holds it together. Mmm. Wow. See that is a creamy texture. So you have two different textures here. You get a nice, crunchy, uh, sharp from the grilling, yet the texture from the pan searing gives it a nice creamy texture. Both ways are incredible. So until next week, folks, mm, do try this recipe at home. And remember, when you're cooking with Charles, you're cooking with good looking. So we'll see you next week, folks. Have a great one. Wow. Mm, mm, mm.